everybody and welcome to Kickstarter update 60 something. Uh, we're still alive, uh, we had a bit of a break, we've been recovering from the uh, pretty hard struggle that it was to get Divinity Originals in, out of the door, uh, but we are in great shape now and we are working on many cool things. Uh, I'm standing here next to the last Kickstarter boxes that are looking for an owner. So if you know somebody or if you are somebody who is entitled to one of these fantastic collector's editions or regular editions, uh, do please fill in your address on the Larian Vault so that we can send these boxes to you. These are the last ones and we'd really like to get them out of the office and into your hands because you paid for it, so it is your property. Let us know. So, what's up? Well, we have quite a few things to communicate today. Uh, we're going to go for a little walk in the office and as we do that, I will explain to you uh, the things that we've been doing and what's next. That was Farang working on a mysterious new dungeon, like he's really far ahead into the design process already. It's an excellent room, we can see that. We can see his perfect talent for putting dungeons together. <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about Farang's dungeon. I'm here to talk about our new companions. We just released a piece of new additional content, which is called The Bear and Burglar. And that has a very good reason, because The Bear refers to Bear Daughter, one of the new companions. And The Burglar refers to Wolgraf, who is the other new companion. I'm here with the writers who wrote The Bear and the Daughter, Sarah who did uh, Bear Daughter, and Jan, who did Wolgraf, uh, uh, who is our burglar. Sarah, why don't you tell us a little bit about Bear Daughter? So, Bear Daughter, uh, as you might guess from her name, was born in the wild. Um, from a relatively early age, she was kind of adopted by a wandering druid. Uh, by the time our game starts, he's been kidnapped, and now she's on his trail to try to find him. Okay, so, and he was like her, her father, I guess, so he's like, it's a daughter looking for her father who's gone missing. and learning the world through her own eyes and all that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so does she have any uh, gameplay functions? Uh, yeah, she can do a couple things special. Um, for one, she can handle Tenebrium and she has immunity to rot. And, yeah, that's um, very cool. Yeah, she's also, yeah it's horrible. <laughs> Whoever thought of that? Uh, <laughs> uh, and she um, has also heard a lot of stories about Rivulon from her father, and so uh, she's kind of a lore master. If you're discovering something new and interesting about the world, she right, can maybe. Wondering which media in the game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you've been doing Wallcraft. Thanks. Tell us about it. Um, Wallcraft is a rogue, um, but he kind of didn't want to become a rogue. Um, when he was a kid, um, he wanted to become a source hunter, mm -hmm. but his voice was stolen from him by sorcerers. And because of that, um, he was uh, denied access to the Order. Yeah. And so he grew up in a kind of rough and tumble way and mm -hmm. became, by necessity, an outlaw. Okay, so he's a good guy, became a bad guy, but probably deep down he still wants to be a good guy. Something like that. Alright, so what, what's his gameplay function going to be? Um, his main gameplay, gameplay function is that he has uh, an excellent perception okay. and that he's a good thief. So he will be seeing all of our secrets. Exactly. That's, uh, so for characters, for instance, like a duo of a knight and a mage mm -hmm. um, who are not very uh, stealth-like, yeah. he will be an excellent addition to the party because he will discover many secrets yeah. for you. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So we have a rogue, we have a ranger, we had Madora who was a warrior, and then we had Jehan who was a mage. So basically you now have a full complement of companions that can complement your party basically, right? And give you some extra backstory. Excellent, thank you guys. Uh, by the way, what are you working on right now? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually do know, but we're not going to tell you just yet. Uh, but these two are engaged in a, a high act of world building, I would say. Um, okay, good. Let's go on to our next thing, Thomas. We're here with Thomas, uh, who some of you may remember as the man who was dancing at the very end of uh, the Kickstarter campaign and caused lots of joy in the office uh, while doing so. And uh, he's been working quite hard actually on a feature that has been highly uh, wanted and highly anticipated. I'm talking about the ability to listen in on dialogues that the other players are having in uh, multiplayer. Thomas, can you explain us exactly what you've been doing? Of course, of course. Hello everybody. So. Um this new feature allows you to listen in on other people's conversations. So, let's say I'm Scarlet and I'm talking to Menjus here, uh, but Roderick, he can be standing next to it, but he can be at the other side of the level for all I care. But let's say he wants to listen in on Scarlet's dialogue. Well now, you can go to Scarlet and you get this new ear icon that says, listen to this character. 
voila, you get the dialogue, the same dialogue you, uh, you, are used, you always have, but instead of normally, you can quit listening or start listening. Yeah, that's a little ear that you have here, right? Okay. Uh, so, let's say, here on, on the one client, Scarlett is continuing the conversation, and you are up, up, up. The text comes in, uh, comes in the other window. And you can scroll here also? And I can scroll back and forward. I see all the history. Let's say I, I just barge in on the conversation while it's already long uh, busy. Yeah. Yeah. Up, up, up. So now you can go. So I start listening. Up, and I can read back all the yeah. things that has been, have been discussed until then. This is much better than what it used to be. Eh? Because in the past you just had a little text bubble and if you missed a piece of the text, the only way that you could actually read up that was through the diary where you had a, a dialogue history. Uh, so this is something we wanted to do for quite some time already, but it turned out that it was really complicated to get it into the game. Well, it was a bit complicated because we had to, uh, we had to catch a lot of edge cases, yeah. usual suspects such as disconnection, uh, but also while you could be listening to somebody, you could get dragged into the conversation yourself. Yeah. So you could be standing next to it and all of a sudden you'd have to participate and uh, we had to make, make that clear to the player as well. Um, yeah, there were at that point you can't leave the conversation anymore, you're in a, some kind of listening state, you're also participating and you have to wait until you actually answered uh, before you can leave the listening state again. I, there are well, lots yeah. of states, but lots they've all been covered now, so everything should work as intended. Alright, let's go on to the next thing. Thank you, Thomas. You're welcome. But improving the quality of life of the user interface in Original Sin is not the only thing that we're doing uh, or adding extra content such as our companions. We're also uh, doing some extra polishing on the game. Uh, for instance, Guillaume here, who is in charge of all of the visual effects on Divinity Original Sin, is working on improving many of the skills and spells that are in the game. Can you give a little insight in what you're doing? Guillaume? Yeah, sure. So as you said, we started a second pass on the uh, skills that were not satisfying yet. Not at all the level we want to reach. So this, for example, is a new cast effect for the whirlwind scale. Yeah. And it's looking, uh, indeed, very improved over the other thing. I've seen something on the screen of Peter here, uh, who is working. What is that, Peter? Uh, this is a charming arrow. A who? The charming arrow. A charming arrow. It's indeed very charming, your arrow. But I like it very much. Uh, what did it look like initially? Oh. You don't remember? No. <laughs> it didn't have the little hearts, I think. Or maybe it just uh, had the little hearts, but it didn't have it all the sparkles. Did, but no, it was a lot more flat. Uh, there was no, no, no real spark in it. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, that's definitely a charming arrow. It's clear for me that it is a charming arrow. It's very charming. Anyway, uh, so we're doing extra visual effects, but that's not the only thing we're doing. We're also working very hard on the sound. And for that, we're going to go and meet Alex. All right? Alright, that concept art is actually all concept art uh, of things that didn't make it to Original Sin and they are from a day when Original Sin was still called Eyes of a Child, so that's, that's a different story. We're here with Alex, uh, who has been working on uh, pimping up the soundscape of Original Sin. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Whew. Basically, I've been uh, adding ambience. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of atmospheres, atmospheric sounds, which have been added to the levels. Um, I've also been creating the sounds for the cutscenes for all the movies, um, and creating some new creatures, like, for example, a creature we will never mention, but which has a very terrific roar. Um, and now, basically, I was uh, I just finished uh, inputting a lot of sounds for the uh, the DLC. The DLC, exactly. Yeah, coming up now. Yeah. So the DLC or the additional content, which includes the companion stuff. Uh, you will also encounter some extra areas, and Alex has also been putting the ambiences and the point songs and all the stuff that goes together with a new area. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Before continuing, uh, there was still a service announcement that I had to make. Um, here you see our t-shirts that uh, we are supposed to send to you. Unfortunately, uh, our factory made a major mistake. They mixed up the wear, wear sheep t-shirts, which are these, with the original Sin t-shirt. So as it turns out, we have exactly the opposite of the order that we made. And we're waiting for them to uh, give us the reprints. Now, uh, they are pretty high quality, so that's why we're using this factory. and so. We'll have 
to wait a little bit, but it's being sorted out, so you should have them soon enough. Sorry about that. Uh, and now on to the uh, other part of the things that I have to talk about today. There's quite a few more things that are coming, uh, like uh, Linux support for instance, or uh, new difficulty modes which are going to be really cool, uh, new skills actually, uh, new ways of playing, uh, well quite a lot actually. So at this point you might be wondering like, Larian, why are you putting so much effort into supporting a game that has been out for two months there and aren't you working already on your new games? Well we are obviously and the reason why we're putting so much support still into Original Sin is because we're susceptible to the criticisms that are out there. There's quite a lot of uh, it that is valid. Uh, for instance, the feature with the cooperative dialogues that you saw Thomas work on, that is something that a lot of you demanded. Uh, we're also aware that you're not that uh, keen on the way that we handle the inventory, so we're working on making that better too. And you'll see a lot of quality of life improvements come over uh, the next months, I would guess. Uh, you also hear reports that we're uh, fooling around with these things, which are controllers. And the reason why we're doing that is because we very much like to get Original Sin to work on a TV screen that you can actually play together with friend or girlfriend sitting in front of a screen and uh, yeah, share that cooperative experience on one big screen. Uh, we don't know if it's going to work yet, so this is not an announcement that we're going to release something along those lines, but we're for sure going to try. Uh, so there's more coming and that means that there will be a few more Kickstarter updates, so flump! Don't dismay, uh, it is not over yet. However, that does bring me to the next point. Will we do another Kickstarter? Uh, frankly, right now, uh, the feeling is no, because we think that crowdfunding has a particular, particular purpose and uh, we are doing quite well, so we shouldn't fish in the investment pool, which can be used by others. However, we are looking for ways that we can uh, engage your community soon in the development process. So we don't want to come to Steam Early Access one day say like okay here's the game and this is it we'd like to participate uh, you to participate a little bit sooner in the entire process so we're going to be looking for a way of doing that uh, rest me to say talking about Kickstarter uh, that I wish the team at In Exile tremendous amounts of luck with the release of Wasteland which is imminent uh, which is going to happen next week uh, we are very big fans of Fallout 2 we're looking very much forward to playing Wasteland 2 uh, we're also incredibly grateful to Brian Fargo for opening the way on Kickstarter for the revival of traditional RPGs he really showed that it was possible and was the one that inspired us not only to go to Kickstarter but also actually to go to Steam Early Access because I was having doubts about it and it was he who convinced convinced me that we should go to Early Access and I haven't regretted it at all. Uh, he really uh, was an eye-opener there. So thank you Brian and good luck uh, with Wasteland 2 uh, next week. Okay, that's going to be it for today. Uh, have fun everybody. I hope you enjoy the new companions. Until next time, toodaloo, bye bye! Speaking of the military, if there's something you don't want to neglect, it's the bids and requests of your generals. Their influence on the battlefield is not to be taken lightly. Have a sherry to calm those nerves. In the Queen's quarters, decorated...